Hello and welcome to my new channel dedicated to my upcoming doctoral dissertation research project in Mongolia. For those of you who know me, welcome to the channel. I hope you find that the stuff I'm going to talk about answers your questions about what it's like to live and do research there and to prepare for research there. Uh, if you're just stumbling across this channel for the first time, welcome. I'll introduce myself a little bit. My name is Tom Conti and I'm a PhD student at Rutgers University studying human behavior and anthropology. And my research specifically focuses on cooperation as a human behavior and how cooperation, meaning our willingness to share and work together with one another, is affected by things like climate change and natural disasters. So my research specifically focuses on Mongolian nomads, so people living in Mongolia, living in tents, herding animals, and moving around the landscape multiple times each year. And as of the filming of this video, I'm about five days out from starting a 10-month-long research project in Mongolia, and as a way of showing you some of my preparations, one of the most questions frequently asked questions I get about my research project is, how do you stay comfortable and warm there? Mongolia has a reputation for being extremely cold in the winter, and the place I'm working in particular, which you'll see in future videos, um, average temperatures in January, February are between negative 30 and negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit on average, with some days I've, I've heard slipping into the negative 50s with wind chill. Um, so people cannot fathom sometimes, how do you deal with that? How do you live there? How do, you, how do people there deal with it? And I'm going to show you my own personal system for living in that kind of climate and dealing with those kinds of temperatures. Um, usually people who don't really know much about outdoor gear and clothing and layering um, often assume that, well, what could you possibly put on your body at one time that can keep you safe and warm and comfortable in those temperatures? And the answer is, there really is no one thing that you wear. Um, it's all about layering. And the, the purpose of layering is that you start out with a layer of clothing and you add and take away layers depending on the conditions and the temperature. So whether it's snowing or raining outside or if it warms up one day. Um, so there's really no one thing that I throw this one piece of clothing on my body and I stay warm um, or I stay cool. Uh, so it's, it's really about what, you, what you'll notice as a general trend in the things that I've selected to wear. And I'm going to post links to each one of these uh, pieces of equipment and where I got them um, in the description to this video below. What you'll notice, though, by and large, there is absolutely no cotton in anything that I've chosen to take with me to wear during the winter. The reason for that is that there's a, a saying that cotton kills. And the reason cotton kills is that if it gets wet in cold temperatures, it loses all of its ability to insulate your body. So think of it as if, um, if you've ever been out in a snowstorm and you're wearing jeans um, and your legs get wet and they're freezing cold, it's the same, it, it's because the, those jeans are made of cotton and it's lost its ability to insulate you. So by and large, Every piece of clothing behind me that I'm about to show you and put on is made of either synthetic materials, so polyester, spandex, nylon, or wool. Because those materials, even if they're wet, retain at least some of their ability to insulate your body and keep you warm and safe. So I started out um, to spare you not having to see me just in my underwear, or maybe to save you some excitement, um, I started out in the base layers that I would wear. Now, the purpose of a base layer is to provide you with a base layer of insulation that you can then add to to keep yourself warm. So what I'm wearing is a polyester base layer shirt and a polyester and spandex mix base layer, um, I guess kind of like a legging. I call them yoga pants for men, but they don't make my butt look that great. 
unfortunately. And what I would wear is I would put this on, and then I would add layers to this to keep myself warm. So we'll start with my legs, and then we'll move up to my upper body, and we'll finish with the things that I'll wear on my hands and feet and head. So what I would start with after this base layer is a pair of insulated synthetic pants. So these are different than a regular pair of pants in that there's insulation within the material. So it's a synthetic shell over insulating material. And I would wear this as the first layer above the base layer on my legs. So I put these on first. Now mind you, I'm, I'm doing this to show you guys, but it's 85 degrees Fahrenheit in central New Jersey right now. So I'm already sweating from this. So I would put on this base layer. And then what do you wear on your feet? Well, I have sock liners on right now. But what I would wear typically in the winter is a pair of these are merino wool insulated socks, and I would wear these as my footwear before I put on my boots, which you'll see in just a second. So now I'm started on my legs. What do I wear above these insulated pants? I would start with a synthetic, what we call a soft shell layer. What, is, what soft shell pants are is uh, they provide you a little bit more durability above these nylon pants or these insulated pants that have a little bit more of a tendency to rip. So I put these over and I put these pants on. And that covers my legs for the time being. Now what do I wear above the base layer on my upper body? I start with just a regular synthetic nylon t-shirt, and that's what I wear as my second layer. Before I start moving on to jackets. After this nylon shirt goes on, then I start putting on coats. And what I start with is a down jacket, a down puffy jacket. Now, there are some pros and cons to wearing down. The pros are that it's very warm, it's very comfortable, and it also compresses really easily. So if you want to store this in a very small space, you can squeeze it in there, and it, it, uh, it'll compress down into almost nothing. Now, the problem with down is that it's almost like cotton. So if down gets wet, it loses a lot of its insulating capabilities. So you have to be really careful to keep this dry and out of precipitation or moisture. So to do that, or to give myself a little bit, number one, a little bit more warmth, another layer, and also to protect the down jacket, I wear what we call a soft shell layer. And the soft shell layer is not waterproof, but it is windproof and it's water resistant. So I put that on over the down jacket. Now it has a hood on it too that I can use to insulate my head and this is what I would wear to this point. Now if you really want to make yourself waterproof rather than just water resistant there are things that you can wear and what I wear, what I've chosen is Gore-Tex pants. Now Gore-Tex is a material that is number one breathable meaning if you sweat under it, it will allow that moisture and, um, and warmth to, to escape, but it's waterproof, so it's an impenetrable layer that will protect you from moisture. So I can put that over my legs, and that will keep my legs dry and out of the rain or snow. I also have a Gore-Tex jacket layer for my upper body. My God, this stuff is so hot. <laughs> so I put this jacket layer over it, and now my whole body is waterproof. So even if I wear the hood of the down jacket, I have a waterproof hood to protect it with. But I can also put other things on my, um, my head to keep it warm. And number one, what I have is... Uh, some people call this a ski mask, some people call it a balaclava. It's made of merino wool, 
and it's made to protect your face, your ears, and your head. Now I look like a bank robber or something. Or maybe just an idiot. And above that, I have a wool hat. Now, I'm sweating like crazy, so you get the point. I'm going to take these off. The glasses are fogging up from them, too. What do you wear on your feet? Now, I've got a pair of insulated boots that keeps you warm down to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I put those on, and now I'm pretty much covered other than my hands. I have Gore-Tex gloves. I'm not going to put them on, but this is what you would wear to keep your hands safe and warm. Now what else can you do? Let's say this is not enough. Um, as an anthropologist, we can also quote unquote go native. So I have also, as an added layer of protection, what Mongolian people would traditionally wear in the winter. And in Mongolian, this thing is called a del, <clears throat> and it's what people typically wear when they're out herding or when it's really cold outside. Now, this is actually one that they wear in the summer. I don't have a winter one yet. The winter one would also be lined with sheepskin. So I would wear this over all of my clothing and it also has a belt that goes around it. As an added layer of protection from the cold and the wind. I even have some local headgear. This is a, well, it's a dead something that somebody made into a hat. And it's really, really, really warm. And even has these earpieces that come down. I call it my Chewbacca hat. All right, that's stupid, I know. But that's how you stay warm in the middle of winter in Mongolia. If you have any questions about any of this stuff or about any of the equipment that I'm wearing and desperately need to take off right now, um, please let me know and be happy to answer your questions. Catch you next time.